Welcome back. So far, we've learned what genetic algorithms are. We spoke about the search space. Um, we spoke about you know, the chromosomes, how we represent um, solutions to the problems that we're trying to solve using genetic algorithms. We spoke about the general structure of a genetic algorithm, the way it works, the idea of selection, random selection, mutation, crossover, and every and all that. And we had several questions that we wanted to answer and we stressed that, for example, representation or encoding and the fitness function are two extremely important things that we need to think about whenever we try to use genetic algorithms to solve problems. And then we also saw some genetic operators. We spoke, as we said, about selection, about um, mutation, about crossover uh, and things like that. And we saw the simple example that we had where we used Java to implement a simple genetic algorithm to solve the problem of having two groups of short line segments. And we tried to automatically detect two larger lines, basically dashed lines formed by two groups of, of uh, short line segments. Now, in this video and the coming ones, I'll speak more about representation, about selection, about uh, mutation and about crossover. Right, so we'll have more details and then we'll have some more interesting Java implementation. Um, if you remember, yeah, the implementation we had before was the microbial genetic algorithm. Um, so now let's um, delve into just a representation or encoding. I must say that most of the information here is from this website, from Marek Obitko and I've actually got his permission to use his material. There is a very nice tutorial that I really encourage you to have a look at. Now, the encoding of chromosomes or solutions is of very high importance when you're trying to solve a problem with genetic algorithms, right? We need to find a, a, a suitable way to represent the solutions or the chromosomes. Encoding uh, very depends on the problem, so it really depends on, on the problem very much depends on the problem yeah and we've seen binary encoding so if we take an example of binary encoding we said it's just a string of bits zeros and ones yeah so that, like that's an example of chromosome and that's another example of chromosome and one problem one well-known problem to be solved that, that can be solved with uh, you know by using binary encoding is for example the knapsack problem and there uh, we have uh, several things with giving value and size so a number of objects each of which has a value and a size the knapsack okay we have like a bag or, or a box or something that has a certain capacity and what we need to do is we need to select a subset of those things that we have to maximize the value of things in the knapsack but we should not ex exceed the um, the capacity of the knapsack, right? So we'll put them. In su we'll, we'll choose a subset of those things, uh, some of them, preferably all of them, but we'll choose as much as many of them as we can to fit into the box without exceeding uh, 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 the capacity of the box, right? Now, to represent that in a binary string, the chromosome to be binary here. What we can say is each bit will say if the corresponding thing is in the knapsack. So basically, we give these objects a number. We, each of them, we give, we give each of them a number. One, two, three. Let's say, for example, if you have ten from one to ten, and then you'll have uh, a binary string, a binary string of length ten. Each of the bits represent one object, and if it's one, then the object is present. If it's zero, then the object is not there. I hope the idea makes sense. It's quite simple. And with that, we can choose the best solution. Notice now, we are trying to choose the best solution. So we'll try to find a combination with the highest, uh, maybe the highest fitness value, right? So we'll keep track of the best solution so far. In the, ex in the implementation we had before, we didn't keep track of the best solution. We just said find or not find. But from now on, as we will see in the coming videos in the implementation that we'll have, we will actually keep track of the best solution. 
Right, let me stop here. In the next video, I'll speak about permutation encoding. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.